Yes, sir. We are live on Facebook. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and warm welcome from Omdal Group of Institutions to today's webinar. I am Dr. Shukonna, Assistant Professor, Omdal Group of Institutions, the moderator for this webinar. Omdal Group of Institutions is one of the reputed colleges under Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology, offering BTEC programs in computer science engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and civil engineering, and BR courses. Today, the Civil Engineering Department of Omdal Group of Institutions is going to present a webinar on why civil engineering is all time a good career option, transforming new challenges to opportunities. Before we get started, now's a good time to review some of the technical aspects of today's presentations. This webinar is presented in listen only mode. This means you will be able to hear the presenter. They won't be able to hear you. However, that doesn't. Department of Civil Engineering, Omdal Group of Institutions, advisor to Iron Exchange Infrastructure Limited, Dr. K.K. Ganguly, Executive Director, Development Consultants Private Limited, and Professor Sheikh Kamrul Alam, Assistant Professor of Omdal Group of Institutions. Now, let me introduce you to Professor Gautam Bandapadhar. Professor Bondopadhyay has worked in the industry, India and abroad, prior to joining teaching profession. He has over 44 years of Ontario. He is a seasoned professional with more than four decades of reach experience as operation head in project planning, design engineering, site and construction management, project procurement, contract management, coordination, etc. He was the senior vice president of the premier water management company, Iron Exchange Infrastructure Limited, Mumbai. He has also worked as a senior general manager of the premier consultancy firm, Development Consultants Private Limited, for more than 25 years. Presently, he is the departmental head of civil engineering. Hello. Can you explain the role of a civil engineer? Sir, over to you. Good evening. Welcome, viewers. I feel honored and privileged to be here with you this evening. Now, being a civil engineer by profession and by choice, I have a responsibility and role to play here to make you this young understand what is civil engineering and why you study civil engineering. So now let us start with what is civil engineering? What is the role of civil engineer? Now fundamentally, we improve the quality of life for the society and we achieve this through a variety of mediums. Now Sir Winston Churchill once said, we shape our buildings and afterwards building shapes us. So what actually is meant by this, that our personalities, our behavioral traits, our defining characteristics are absolutely a product of the built environment we live in. As civil engineers, 
many of our actions, the decisions we take, make the solution we implement in the health of the society. The inventions of, as you can see from the mud house building to Taj Mahal, then they say, I mean, at Kolkata, this, uh, uh, you have this Howrah Bridge, Vidya Sagar Setu, your Vivekananda Setu, this Mahabar, all this, and Metro Rail is going on now. So these underground structures, all are the creation of civil engineers. Even say in the, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, only ceiling, that is also creation of civil engineers. And abroad, this uh, Burj Khalifa Tower, all these are creation of civil engineers. So inventions of civil engineers have brought much relief of this profession prides itself. And in the fact, it works towards the betterment, well-being, and safety of the society, human, mankind. Civil engineering is a branch of engineering which deals with people, civilization of country, and their needs and basic facilities. Needs and so as long as they are humans and as long as the natural phenomenon like an earthquake, man-made and natural disasters, civil engineers will be required. Now, simplify, let me simplify it. Let, I mean, uh, take an example, say you, in the morning, you wake up in the morning, brush your teeth, shower, have your breakfast, then you go to the office, walk out there, then you take your lunch, and after the day long walk, at the end of the day, you come back to your home. Now, after coming back to home, you make fun with your family and kids, then you take your dinner and watch some movies and all these things, and then you go to bed. So, so starting from this daily routine, morning you need water. Again, this water supply scheme is a creation of civil engineer. Then you have to go to the office by road. I mean, uh, either it is a public transport or your own transport, the road built by civil engineers. Then you'll go to office, then you'll walk there. This All this electricity at your home and at your office, again, for the to make this electricity, production of electricity in structures, maybe big, maybe small. So all these structures are made by civil engineers. Even this transmission of this supply, power supply, you need transmission tower or poles. That is also made by civil engineers. So every need is made up by civil engineers only. Now say this, I mean, you have, you have to food. So that is also, we need this good farming, and irrigation system. So irrigation system is a part of the civil engineering. So for better irrigation, you need canal so, and good water supply. Now, again, at the end of the day, you have to dispose of this waste through a, you should have, so you should have better sewage treatment plant and sewage management system. So you can see majority of the task directly or indirectly required civil engineering. So civil engineering degree play a vital role in fulfilling the societal infrastructural needs. And India is a developing country. There are still many places don't have the electricity, don't have the clean water to drink, and don't have the proper sewage system. And you know, at this in, uh, uh, juncture, I mean, when we are facing this, I mean, COVID-19, the health infrastructure is a vital requirement of the society. So we have to improve upon the, all these things. So you need clean water to drink, you need good sewerage system, and you need the road to, for the commute to commute. So all these things where civil engineers have a role to play and for the development of the country, this infrastructural development is a part of the civil engineering scope. So this uh, electricity, then mega cities, urban structure. Now say, I mean, this Kolkata city, now it has already been spread on the south side. It is up to the, your, uh, this, uh, that side, north side, it is up to Bharatpur, south side, it is Baripur, and then in the Howrah side, it is Uluberia, then they are either this side, it is up to, actually it is spreading, already spread up to Sirampur and 
is going beyond. So all this, I mean, urbanization and the city development also comes under the low civil engineering strength. So now say, the amongst all branches of engineering, the range and the application of civil engineering, you can understand from my this few words that the range and application of civil engineering is the broadest and the most visible. In fact, the entire infrastructural framework of a modern nation is the creation of the civil engineers. The credit of building mightly power plants, cement plants, dams, airports, seaports, highways, inland waterways, and industrial plants goes to civil engineers. So these professionals are also engaged in building an unending urban structure, maybe commercial, maybe sky cappers, tunnels. You can see this, I mean, metro rail tunneling work is going on under the Hooghly River. So these roads, urban rapid transport system, sports stadium, all and these things and so on. Now, whatever you might be in cities, wherever you might be in cities, or in villages, or in towns, everywhere, you will simply cannot miss the creation of civil engineers. So that is, that is, I mean, the broad aspect and the civil engineering. So there is an endless demand for this job profile and the private as well as the private sector. Now say the civil engineering dem demands a vast, multifaceted skills. So only, only the civil engineering degree will not serve the purpose. You have to upgrade your skill time to time, right from the patience to dedication to creativity. Creativity is the major thing of the civil engineering and architecture. So creativity to self-discipline, to humility, humility and every virtue counts here. Enterprising skill can be a winning trait in this skill and at every project and every project it is nothing but an adventure so if you are really like love the adventure and challenging especially in challenging work environment then civil engineering is the best option for you now so in india whenever one thinks of pursuing a graduation program engineering is always on the card so this is because time and again this field has shown how it has grown, adapted to the ever evolving requirements and given students the knowledge and skills to pursue a fruitful career. Now, thanks to the increasing demand in the industry and improved scope, this field has branched into many all is a green and evergreen and strong engineering skill. So, so what you require actually, you require not only the degree or skills, you have to have your innovative ideas. Once these innovative ideas and cost-effective plans, ideas start snowballing, then there is no stopping to it. So this is the basic requirement of civil engineering and role of civil engineering. And after even after 44 years of my professional life, I love to be here. And again, I mean, day-to-day -day activities, I enjoy it. So now, I mean, I'll hand over to moderator for the to present my next speaker. Thank you, sir. I take this opportunity to welcome our second speaker for the day, Dr. K.K. Ganguly. Dr. Ganguly has over 56 years of experience in India and UK covering design, site, project management, research, and teaching. He is a corporate member of the Institutions of Structural Engineers London, Institution of Civil Engineers London, Member of Concrete Society London, Fellow of the Institutions of Engineers India. 
as an external faculty member he was associated with jadavpur university for a period of 15 years in teaching design of industrial steel structures and repair of structures presently he is working as an advisor to development consultants private limited kolkata sir if you please give an overview on why should one study civil engineering sir over to you thank you very much first of all good evening to you all can you hear me yeah can you hear me yes 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 sir yes first of all i would like to thank omdo and group of institutions especially the civil engineering department for the, inviting me i am very happy to be here the very good presentation has already been done by professor bandopadha regarding the role of civil engineers i will try to recap the salient points quickly for your information why to study civil engineering this is the topic i will be talking about civil engineering is an important core of engineering subject and play a very important role for all development projects it is an integral part of all the projects and in short we cannot do without civil engineering so far projects are concerned what it may cover discipline wise civil engineering may be related to architectural planning building material construction technology environmental engineering geotechnical engineering hydraulic remote sensing planning design that is preliminary work conceptual design etc structural engineering survey transportation engineering i'll go little bit into detail to explain the areas that it may cover now one important part of civil engineering is related to structural engineering this is a specialized area and one has to do post graduation after civil engineering or membership in the professional institution like institution of structural engineers england now this uh, professional uh, membership in the institution of structural engineers london means seven hours exam at a time is actually seven and half hours half an hour is lunch break and and only 8 to 10% people pass will pass in, in a year structural engineers are authorized to give stability certificate of the structures they design example the projects may be hospital project hotel housing and similar other areas you know only the structural engineers in all disciplines are entitled to give this certificate to make the clients happy about the safety of the structure no other discipline is can be involved so this is a very important part of the structural engineer then they deal with foundation engineering different types of types of uh, foundation including raft pile heavy civilian projects like port harbor ship building water supply distribution water quality study as per the forecast there will be problem of portable water in the future in our state and in the country so it's a big responsibility of the civil engineers to go into the problem and try to sort it out sewerage and drainage and sewage treatment plant problem areas more work will be required in the future industrial projects professor bondopadha has already covered relates to power cement chemical fertilizer paper etc continuous requirement for a country like india the infrastructure project roads and bridges it is a continuous requirement rigid pavement so far pavements are concern concern flexible pavement rigid pavement should be costly initially but the performance will be better so for the bridges are concern civil engineer with specialized training can have a career only on this item things like suspension bridge cable stage bridge concrete bridge steel bridge composite bridge box cutter bridge arch bridge segmental construction launching system safety etc these are all 
very, very fantastic thing. And if you get involved in this plot, I'm sure you would not like to come out of it. Then the other areas of civil engineers would be irrigation, dams, different types. These are the problem areas. The dams are getting damaged, as you see in the, in the newspaper and the news, almost every year. Housing and HIG, MIG, LIG project, there is a huge shortage of the requirements of affordable houses in our country and in fact all over the world. Space research and launching pads going on continuously in our country, airport runway, control tower, sunwind building, further work will be required in the future. Defense projects, it will be related to bridges, safety structures, bunkers going on all the time. Teaching, research, publishing work has to be done all the time. Other projects like educational institutions, hospital, hostel, port complex, in number everywhere. Now in our country, especially the last couple of years, we are trying to make smart cities in important areas. More people are coming to urban areas for better opportunities in the process problems are created. What are the problems? The problems should be related to accommodation, education, water, storage, food, and the cities have to expand to accommodate these people. Even the crime rates are getting increased due to the flow of people to the urban areas. Other areas may be project management, cost control, environmental engineering, construction work, special projects, protecting our heritage structure, disaster management, repair and restoration work, marketing activities. Many of our bridges appear to be <clears throat> in distressed condition. The information should not come as a shock in one day. What is required? Inspection, monitoring, with sensors and rectification work as per the requirements. We are very, very much behind and we have to make it up. Every country is facing this problem. They are, uh, they are not replacing a bridge with, by constructing a new one. Specialized knowledge and experience will be necessary. Maximum opportunities can you hear me? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. Maximum opportunity. My screen is not, I cannot see anybody. Maximum opportunities will be available to civil engineers to take part in development activities of the country. The task will be tremendous, exciting, and challenging. To do well in the profession will be the key factor for success. This will mean sincerity, interest, hard work for the job. Our country will need good and sincere civil engineers in the future. Research, higher studies will be necessary for further progress development and development of the discipline. We are capable of fulfilling all the requirements. Now regarding post-COVID effects. Just a minute, I cannot see anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, first COVID effects, you know, regarding the design, what I was thinking that we have to change our style. What was we were doing in the past cannot be continued because of the present situation and the fear. The people are living in fear, you know, in, in our country, not in our country, all over the world. Some of us will be done outside the office, that is working from home. Coordination with other disciplines have to be addressed carefully for multi-discipline projects. This mostly I'm talking about industrial projects, which I'm more used to it. Standard design has to be followed, which has been developed over the years. It is not easy, but we must try after proper coordination to the extent possible. Important area to be handled properly. Simpler and similar detailing should be emphasized. 
we should not try to create something new which people are not used to and make these things complicated in the process. Use of precautions in the design, care for seismic detailing and restrictions in the code to be checked. Now there are some restrictions and hesitation for the design with precaution elements. Now we have to be careful. Lot of portal violations we are doing every day to design some iconic structure. I'm sure for precaution is also we can be careful and this and, and develop design to meet the present requirement. Outsourcing may be required, but may not be very easy to implement. Checks on the availability of the material to be done. There should be flexibilities in the flexibilities in the design to accommodate changes if required. Regarding construction, I feel the site visit to be done after proper taking proper precaution. This may be reduced cannot be avoided fully. Money distribution to projects may take some time. Migrant laborers have returned to their states. This may create shortage of laborers to site for some time. The use of mechanical system where, wherever possible to be encouraged. Manual handling should be reduced. Sites may have to manage with less manpower. Some construction activities may have to be managed by video presentation for information and clearance. There may be hesitation with the people working in a site to take initiation because of the fear. Special arrangement initiatives, I mean, special arrangement may have to be done for the workers who might to stay at site to avoid traveling. Workers always stay in the site in some numbers, but additional numbers may be, may be accommodated for that additional facilities to be arranged for the workers. The situation is likely to improve with time, I'm sure. Some meetings, interaction related to design, construction, and project management, etc., have to be done with the client through video serial conferences. I'll be pleased to answer questions later if required. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now we will go ahead and again hand it over to Professor Bondopadhyay. Sir, what all challenges and opportunities are likely to come to civil engineers in post pandemic situation? That is, what is your vision for civil engineering in 2025? Also, what are the new facets or recent trends in civil engineering technology that may emerge in the coming years? Sir, please. Thank you. Now, civil engineers, you have understood so far from the discussion that we have been providing the infrastructure of the societies since the very beginning of the civilization. Now, hello. I can hear you. So we can transform a poor, under, underdeveloped area into a sustainable and prosperous region. The critical roles of engineering in addressing the large scale pressing challenges facing our societies worldwide and widely recognized such large scale challenges include access to affordable health care we are facing right now, tackling the coupled issues of energy, transportation, and climate change, providing more equitable access to information for our population. That is more requirement is clean drinking water, natural resource management, among numerous others. Even today, when the global economy is faced with mounting challenges due to coronavirus pandemic, Indian government is trying to revive the economy by emphasizing on infrastructure development. And we have already seen that civil engineers play a key role in the infrastructure development of the society. Now you can see the, what are the challenges coming in 
the near future. See, you know, you know, you understand that what is global warming? Why global warming is there? Because, because the sea level is rising. Okay, so estimating the sea level is one challenge. And enhancing disaster management through infrastructure resilience. So the, you see, I mean, this last Amphan you have seen, so there are this disaster, so this disaster management system, we have to involve in more scientific way and data collection and keeping those data in our record so that, I mean, for the future, uh, this I mean, disaster, we can uh, consider those data and improve upon the uh, task we have to take. Say, this shelter, during this disaster system, we have to make shelter. So that is another aspect, another areas where development is required and investment is required. So the, then this reducing soil erosion. So you have seen during this, I mean, uh, this uh, Amphan or this, I mean, rising uh, sea level or the this uh, river level. So soil is getting eroded. So embankment, making a proper and sustainable embankment is another area where we have to, to get more task. Then improving building energy system. Nowadays, we don't have any luxury to consume more energy. So we have to think about the say, using of smart building lights, then your renewable energy, that is from the solar energy, you have to uh, think of, I mean, to, to replace uh, uh, from, uh, the electrical energy by solar energy or wind energy. Even, even in the sea shore area, uh, we can use the tidal, tidal uh, energy also we can use and we can uh, use the power to supply in that area, seashore area, say in the Sundarbon, all or I mean uh, such areas. We can make tidal power plant and we can use those things and uh, uh, give them the power supply. Then improving, uh, managing groundwater. See, every day in, say in our Kolkata city or this Howrah, we are drawing water from underground water, either through tubal or I mean some, or, some, else, some other means. So we have to manage this groundwater. How, if there is no rain, then how we'll use this groundwater? Because when it is pumping, then ultimately one day this aquifer will settle and the whole city will may settle. So we have to manage this groundwater table. Then monitoring the health of infrastructure. This, this is the need of the hour. Now this, you can see how this, I mean, this hospital, hospital sector, this hospital management is, I mean, infrastructure is a, in a bad shape. So we have to, we have to, I mean, people, I mean, the uh, government, maybe central or maybe state government, they have to invest on this structure and there will be development of it. I'm sure there will be investment and development on this health structure. There will be many more, I mean, this uh, infrastructure will come on health sector instead of, instead of the, uh, you know, this, I mean, ornamental commercial structure because need of the hour to improve upon our health, then water supply, sanitary system. So requirement of public in the health engineer will be a great, in great demand. Now, and the wash structure that I'll discuss, I mean, uh, afterwards. Now, the reducing traffic congestion. See, you day by day, we are buying new cars and this traffic is increasing. So the density of the traffic, how to regulate and how to improve upon this, we have to think about it. That's why you will see that many flyover has to come up in Kolkata and in West Bengal and already in Mumbai and other cities, it is already come up. So there will be more investment on these areas. So road sector, that is transport sector, then your health sector. And another thing I'll mention, Sir already mentioned, that is mass housing. Okay, low cost housing and mass housing. We have to invest upon this because of this, we have to renovate this slum and we have to go for the mass housing scheme. So there will be investment in these areas also. Now, improving the construction productivity. Now, somebody has asked a question that I'll answer later on. Now, however, there are encouraging signs that there would uh, uh, leaders recognize the importance of continuity to fund engineering, science, and technology. Now, there has to be investment on in this sector if any nation like to develop. Okay, 
So the investment should be on these sectors as well as health sector. So, and it's engineering, specialist civil engineering. You have to learn, it is mostly, it's a common sense, but basic knowledge of your science and mathematics is required. So we have to learn these things and mobilizing the engineering, developing the world. It is a vitally important, in turn, very difficult, different world for civil engineering in 2025. So if you look at 2025, now we are at 2020. So in next four years, there'll be much investment on all these sectors. And the, as I mean, the society, there will be a lot of this pandemic situation and the crisis. And we have to, before taking up those, I mean, to face those crises, we should make investment on this sector so that we are ready to face a uh, uh, pandemic situation or any other disaster. Now, I mean, see, even not only, I mean, the infrastructure development, we have to uh, uh, develop society because we have to supply that, we have to use uh, optimum use of natural resources. We should go for the green energy and the green building scheme. Okay, so that we can we can reduce the carbon emission. So to reduce the carbon emission, we have to invest upon the this I mean greeneries. So green I mean this uh, your uh, plantation of trees using of green uh, engineering green concrete. So when you learn civil engineering, we learn all these things. So we are touching upon these things. Then uh, this I mean green engineering, green uh, your uh, technology means you have to use renewable sustainable materials so which are can be recycled and reused so those will be the uh, demand of the your future generation so how you can the use of materials what type of material you should use so that that can be recycled and reused okay not only steel okay so you have to think about this i mean there are already many researches is going on and and as of that, we have started using the alternative materials as well as alternative parts also. But we have to emphasize on these things and investment should come from the, I mean, the government or other agencies. Now the civil engineers world of 2025 will be even more challenging than today. The application of civil engineering knowledge and skills to enhance water supply and improve distribution could become one of the civil engineers greatest challenges. Challenges. So we have to think about this, and we have to. I mean, our government should invest in on these sectors. Now, let me let me refer one. I mean, this uh, report, Economic Times report. Actually, according to that, 95 billion square feet is the prediction predicted demand in the real estate and construction industry by 2026. So you can imagine, okay, I agree that uh, under the present circumstances, there will be delay of one or one and a half years, but investment has to come on this sector if country like to develop and take it the generation to further. So despite such high demand, the sector lacks sufficient workforce. Somebody was asking, I mean, what will be the role of engineers? There will be, I mean, crisis. But, I mean, definitely investment has to come. Unless investment is there, nobody, I mean, country cannot flourish. Okay, so based on the report published in the Dainik Jagaran, the employment of civil engineers is projected to grow by at least 10% over the next 10 years. So. We don't think that, I mean, there will not be any job, I mean, to the professionals. So demand supply gap will be of 44 million core civil engineering professionals in India and abroad. So as India is a developing country, the current infrastructure suffers of solence and civil engineers should be needed to manage projects, structures, government jobs, including your PSUs, PWD, railway, irrigation, there are shortage of manpower. Now one newspaper, there are thousands of vacancies in the government jobs for civil engineers. The Indian recently announced over 12,000 vacancies for civil engineers. As per NSDC, 
the road and railway construction projects will have to be doubled in the employment by 2024. So this is the Indian scenario. And in the according to the new research report by the Global Market Insights, civil engineering market is expected to reach US dollar 11.72 trillion by 2025 growth. Yes, there will be some backlog because of the, this situation. So now you have seen, now we can, I mean, this uh, using this BA, BWSL, that is Bandra only uh, ceiling. You can now reach the Bombay city from the airport or wherever only in 40 to five minutes. See the development. Now the, see our this construction industry. That is, I mean, of course, it includes mechanical and electrical also. The construction industry is the second largest industry after agriculture. It accounts for 8% of the GDP. It contributes significant contribution to the national economy and provided employment to larger, provided larger, large number of people. So you can understand if there is no investment on this sector, then country will not further development. And when this, I mean, as this construction industry is, I mean, 8% account for, then unless there is a development, then contract country's GDP is as of date, I mean, it has gone down again further, it will go down. So, I mean, uh, the government, I mean, they understand these things and definitely they will go for this investment so that, I mean, there will be uh, the GDP, this will, the con construction industry will contribute further to development of this, I mean, country GDP. So this is, uh, this is more or less the, your, this 2025, your uh, projection. Now, somebody is looking for, now we have to learn, not only the undergraduate, we are learning the basic things of civil engineering, but now the present demand or requirement is, you have to recent trend in civil engineering technology. So you have to learn many more softwares because unless you upgrade your skills, you will be no help. So not only under graduation of any, I mean, graduation is not only, only option. You have to always, you have to upgrade your skills. So. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you, this, I mean, new aspirants, you, you don't know all these things, but let me uh, clarify these things. Now, building information modeling. See, you, when you are designing on a board, earlier days, during our period, we have to draw the, this, I mean, any drawing on the board. Now we are doing it on a AutoCAD or Revit system. So this, that is a software. So there is a time requirement is much less. So there should be two, I mean, you have seen this, I mean, during this pandemic situation, this, I mean, this we have to maintain the social distancing. So we have to, we have to depend upon this automation. Okay. And uh, integration of the technology with our civil engineering. Already we are in use. Now see this, we have to use, I mean, in the uh, site drone. Okay to control, see, even, even see this, I mean, uh, uh, during this disaster, this arm we are we are using drone. Okay, we, are, we have to use the GIS, okay? So, so that, I mean, we have the data at the right time and with immediately, we should have data in our hands so that we can control, we can mitigate the disaster quickly. So then artificial intelligence, robotics, all this will be the demand in the future. Now, see wearable technology, then smart building. And as Sarah also mentioned, that modular construction that is prefabricated building will be the need of the next generation. Already there is one uh, prefabricated steel structure building is there near Weibel in the Rajarhat. Okay. Now 3D printed dwelling also come into picture, but it is now very expensive. So we are not using, but when the Indian manufacturer will come, they will, I mean, they develop this software 3D printer, then I mean, when the cost will be less, then will be, this will be useful for our 
I mean, uh, this engineering for civil engineering. So, I mean, in near future, in next one or two years, already some of the, this, I mean, uh, this, uh, your uh, software are in use by the engineers for the infrastructure development. And uh, this also will come into force. Now say, let us, I mean, Now, but I mean, for this, see, now say, I'll tell you one thing. Okay, we are talking about the civil, but even for development of these things, the basic requirement, say this, I mean, this, I mean, wireless technology, that is even we are facing today to conduct this, I mean, this webinar, the internet quality. So there has to be improvement on this thing. Then only this digitalization will be more effective. So. I mean, uh, there should be, I mean, improvement upon this, I mean, cable wire system, fiber wire system to door to door. Then only, I mean, this, I mean, this, there will be, I mean, this software can be very useful, I mean, for day to day activity and in the, uh, to mitigate the disaster. Now, post pandemic scenario in civil engineering. So, what, from, I mean, this pandemic situation, how can you save yourself? That is only by wash. So wash, you have to wash your hands as and when required when you are going out. So we call it as wash infrastructure. So there has been, there will be development. There has to be investment on this wash infrastructure. So for that is actually health infrastructure. So our demand, our requirement is improvement upon on the water sanitation and hygiene that is called wash are not being adequately addressed so far. As civil engineers, we have an important role to play in supporting the new global momentum in improving wash infrastructure, especially in the healthcare facility. So this, I mean, already, I mean, in the world and uh, civil engineering society already we have taken up and there was numerous meetings with the government bodies. Now infrastructure investment is needed around the world, not only in India, including in the India, our wash infrastructure is deteriorating at an alarming rate as documented by the American Society of Civil Engineers, the infrastructure report cards, which gave wastewater infrastructure and the drinking water are an unimaginable condition. From reform sewerage design and treatment practices to updated town planning, urbanization, guidelines, re-implementing social distancing, increased awareness in maintaining sanitation practices and cleaner and smoother sub deflection from the using anti microbial materials. I, I was 50 minutes back, I was talking about the use of material. So, so we have to think about this antimicrobial materials. This paints, you should not, you will not be able to, after some years, you will not be able to this chemicals. Okay, we have to think about using separate other things for, I mean, this, uh, this microbial paint. So now we have to think about these things and Getting awareness of establishing a connection between healthcare and spaces. So, developing tools and technology that support best practices of design and construction, as well as best material selection, gaining an unbiased commitment from ones understand the government norms, how well they can adopt design professional and experts of paramount importance to health, hygiene, and safety parameters in speak use. So these are the uh, things. And then the post, so where we can in, uh, expect this post uh, in uh, investment scenario post COVID. So as I have told you, investment in mass housing, warehouse infrastructure, public health and sanitation, and investment will come for restructuring of Sundarbon mangrove, area after devastating super cyclone. So there will be there will be more investment in this area. And another thing, if you see, I mean, last week I have visited Sundarbon. 
the saline water, how we have to improve upon this, because I mean this, now everywhere it is saline water. So I have, I mean, from uh, this INX training uh, uh, department, I have supplied, we have we went there and to supply the water, water system to mitigate their immediate recovery. So this is, these are the challenges and there are no dots of opportunity. So challenges are many and of course, if there are challenges, opportunities will be there. So that's all this time. Okay, now hand over to Dr. Sukhanna. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the information. Next, we have Professor Kamrul Alam. Professor Alam did his MTech with specialization in geotechnical engineering from Alia University, Kolkata. He worked in Ashoka Projects Private Limited as an engineer before joining teaching. He has more than two years of experience in teaching and published about three research papers in international journal and conferences till date. He is also associated with some renowned geotechnical consultancy firm. Currently, he is in Omdal Group of Institutions as Assistant Professor of Civil Engineering Department. Sir, if you could tell something about the Civil Engineering Department of Omdal Group of Institutions and what is the eligibility criteria for admissions to civil engineering? Sir, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you uh, for the question and uh, good evening all. Um, Professor Bandhavadhyay and uh, Dr. Ganguly already talked about uh, the challenges and opportunities uh, and uh, what will be the post pandemic effects. But uh, before taking admission in any colleges, one should know about the particular department uh, he sees in interested for. Now, uh, Omdal Group of Institutions uh, presently one of the best engineering colleges in West Bengal. And uh, on behalf of uh, Civil Engineering Department, uh, I will try to give a short introduction about our department. Uh, unlike the other departments, Civil Engineering Department of uh, Omdal Group of Institutions is also a well organized department. And uh, it has started in 2010 with uh, all the necessary equipments required for the undergraduate course. And right from the inception, the department provided high quality value based uh, education to the students, uh, ensuring the graduates are well prepared to contribute to the betterment of tomorrow's society. Uh, in order to give uh, practical know how to the students for the theoretical topics studied by them in the classroom, laboratory facility is very important uh, requirement for engineering course. Uh, in our department, we have uh, seven fully equipped uh, state-of-the-art laboratories like the survey lab, geotechnical engineering lab, concrete technology lab, transportation engineering lab, CAD lab, STAT lab, and uh, environment engineering lab, and uh, which are fully set up with the uh, latest uh, equipments and uh, facilities and uh, supervised by experienced faculty members. Also, there are uh, trained technicians to help the students in uh, performing the experiments. The students can perform the entire practical on their own, keeping the track of the latest trains in the field uh, under the keen supervision of uh, specialized faculties. And uh, the labs are actually the one of the finest laboratory facilities for the aspiring civil engineering students. Uh, moreover, the department lab library, the models, uh, charts, and video lectures on various topics uh, add to the department resources and make teaching learning process uh, more effective. And uh, as already discussed by uh, Professor Bandhavadhyay and Gang Dr. Ganguly, the various sectors uh, where civil engineering works, keeping in mind all this, teaching is done in an uh, industry-specific way, which uh, enables them to uh, adapt the work culture of industries easily. We uh, organize uh, field visits. Uh, we have an industrial tour to make known to the students about the practical work culture in the industry. We organize uh, national seminars and workshop also the department arranges expert lectures from the experienced technocraft from uh, various organizations and institute in uh, addition to the regular academic activity uh, the department also offers its services in the form of uh, consultancy and uh, testing to various departmental and uh, private agencies and the quality of uh, services provided by the department is well uh, acknowledged in the professional field as well and the students and faculties have own uh, national and international recognition and continuing to bring laurels to the department by their work. As for the vision and mission, our effort is to provide 
best facilities to our students so that uh, they may compete with the modern civil engineering world and uh, com contribute to the society and nation. Now, uh, if we come to the alumni of our department, almost uh, all our graduates are well placed in industry and or academia, including uh, IITs, NITs, uh, foreign universities, and major national and international construction companies. I would like to mention a few of them. Let me share. Uh, from the slide I um, shared, uh, you can see uh, Sora of Bira from uh, 2015 batch uh, uh, is uh, working in an underground metro project of uh, Kolpoturu Limited and he's a PZD from Nikmar. Suvonil Jana from uh, 2015 batch is currently working in Sapurji Palonji Group. Rohan Kankar from uh, 2015 batch is currently working in AECOM Limited and he is also a PZD from Nikmar. Sovik Dhara from uh, 2016 batch, currently he is working in Imar India. Saptorsi Mojundar from 2017 batch, he is in uh, Ombuja Cement. Soro Roy from uh, 2018 batch, currently he is pursuing his MTech in Water Resource Engineering from uh, IIT Guwahati. Bhaskar Das from 2019 batch, currently he is pursuing his Masters from Leeds University, UK. Tasni Mali from 2019 batch, she is also pursuing her master's from uh, Leeds University, UK. These are the few uh, alumni of our department. Now, let me talk about the admission in Omdal group of institutions. The criteria to get admission in Omdal is almost the uh, same, uh, unlike the other uh, colleges in West Bengal. The the criteria, uh, the students should have 45% marks in physics and mathematics uh, along with the chemistry or biology or computer science, computer application, business studies in uh, his or higher secondary examination. The student have a valid WBJE or JE main rank and the candidate have to pass both in theory and practical paper. These are the basic criteria for admission. Um, and um, the time is short. Uh, I try, try to give an insight about our college and department. But uh, if you have any further queries, you may visit our college website uh, www.omdoyal.com slash civil engineering to go get more information about our department. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Now, to Professor Bondopadhyay, sir. Sir, what are the career aspects or the job opportunities waiting for civil engineering graduates? Hello. Why you should think before selection of career? Wish to learn or wish to earn your own choice or someone else governs you. Fund available economics condition social prestige or prayer so these are the things it's will come in mind before one, so the positive and negative space before and selection of the career now then higher studies versus jobs so you can go for higher studies after graduation so those candidates who are willing to do higher studies after btech they can go with MTech and ME. There are, I mean, various subdivision of civil engineering already discussed. Then MS Master in Science or MS in uh, the better than MTech and equivalent to PhD, MBA, then Masters or post graduation in construction management, infrastructure and real estate. Then your this. Uh, Many, many things are there, quantity surveying. So all these things are there. And jobs, if you select to do job, then you can go with the private com companies or government sector, PSUs. Now, there are many companies. So uh, let, me, let me tell you, I mean, you know, Larsen to go, Gammon India, Punj Lloyd, Joy Prokash, Nagarjuna Construction, there are many, many. I mean, I mean, I'll take, I mean, one day to, I mean, name of these companies. So uh, I, I am taking few names and there are consultancy firms like, I mean, EIL, Mekon, Development Consultant. Now construction, 
see construction in india so demand and growth see you see the hello so these are the companies you can see i mean there are many other companies now construction in india construction in india is a fast growing and expanding market so you will see actually by 2030 next slide contribution in gdp may reach 15% by 2030 gdp will reach 15% more largest employer in india by 2022 expected to employ 75 million by 2025 now it is it has shown 22 but, but it will be now 2025 so even in the world also usd 1 trillion size of india's construction market in 2025 that is third largest in global because it's a developing country and there will be investment now people will invest in, in more in india because of this china uh, covid 19 scenario now upsc examination you can go for higher studies and upsc examination for i mean engineering services that also you can go for it is all i mean you have to take what are the you, you like there are many many things you can do after i mean this graduation so actually there you have to upgrade your skills you have to learning is the main thing learning process you, if you don't learn you will not be able to go up to the ladder so you have to learn many things and you you have to upgrade your skills there there is no dark top job in the coming four years now entrepreneurship in civil engineering so what are the scopes in civil engineering for entrepreneurship many thing you can open your own designing testing execution surveying surveying is another field then i mean that uh, this third party quality assurance then you can go for the quality surveillance then your this billing invoicing is another you can nowadays i mean people are uploading so you can i mean think about of opening your own firm to handle all these things now this uh, township all upon then maintaining a township or estate so that is also repairing and maintenance okay so that is also you can i mean uh, uh, you can create your own company for this thing then waste management system solid waste management then rainwater even in our college we have i mean going to start the rainwater harvesting so even in your building or in your society where you start you start this rainwater harvesting and the solid waste management in our Uh, uh college now there is a changes in the your syllabus also now i mean the our second year student they are studying things we are touching what are the civil engineering uh, and renewable energy so already this i mean uh, the syllabus already changed and they have started uh, studying all these things from the very beginning so i think you will learn and you will love to study civil engineering that's all thank you thank you sir thank you so much now we'll go to the question answer session so we have a question from the audience the question is we are in a situation where the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning is increasing and it is argued that sensors and robots would replace laborers and engineers this will create shortage of employment for civil engineers what's your view on this See, already I have discussed. Yes, these things. I mean, this it is required because I mean social distancing or all these things. But I mean, let me let me tell one thing. See, in our uh, era, there was no software. Okay, so we have to handle it on manually. But there is a development of software now. People are using. Is there any? Is there any? I mean, job cut? I don't think so. Okay. there will be reduction in unskilled labor but there will not be any art cut job cut for the engineers so i mean rest assured there will not be job cut i mean adopt all this i mean this uh, your uh, machine learning and all this adopt yes we have to use robot we have to use i mean this automation we have to adopt all these things already adopted in the my if you see the tunneling work all this i mean automation only it is driven by automation only so don't worry i mean we are already adopting and i mean in near future more 
this uh, 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 adoptment of this facilities will be there. But um, I, I can assure you, there will not be any job cut for the engineers. Thank you, sir. Next, we have another question. Uh, please discuss the modern techniques used in construction field. Already, already have touched upon this subject. This is a, I mean, it's a vast subject. So modern techniques, all these are modern techniques. See, robot, machine learning, intelligence. Okay, then, I mean, using of drone. Then, I mean, collapsible shuttering. All these are techniques, model te uh, techniques. So already it, are, it is an, in use and uh, this, this can be dealt and discussed in a separate uh, uh, venue or a separate meeting. It cannot be discussed. It's vast things. There are many things. Yes, we can do these things, and there are many things. Thank you, sir. Next, we have another question. How to mitigate the gap between the concept and implementation of integrated infrastructure resource management? So, unless you have the experience and modern technique you will not be able to do this. That's why you have to learn proper planning software. Maybe with MS project, then you have to learn Premavora so that you can multifaceted project where not only civil, various teams are involved in an industrial project, say for a power plant. So all these planning has to be done on the Primavera platform. And then you can resource, it can be used and properly utilized and then man management can done uh, properly. So there will not be any loss on uh, this, uh, your, your uh, revenue and manpower. Thank you, sir. Next, we have another question. Sir, what are the positive and negative aspects of on-site job for civil engineers? Repeat one, repeat once again. Sir. Yes, sir. So what are the positive and negative aspects of on-site job for civil engineers? On-site jobs are many. So let me see on-site data. There are, I mean, construction, there is design, then there is a billing, then there is a surveying, then, I mean, all these things come under on-site. And off-site means, I mean, say, you have, you have a, I mean, you have to explore oil from the offshore or i mean on the shore okay they are only this i mean royal uh, this oil rigging facilities here i mean you can work so there is i mean uh, there is no any end of these things i mean there are many many jobs are available so i mean i think it's a not question is not very specific okay thank you sir now we come to the end of the webinar I would like to thank all our distinguished speakers for making excellent presentations and making this webinar interesting and meaningful. I would also like to thank all the audience for being with us this evening. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, viewers. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. It is here, you know, what I was saying, you know, because my picture was not there. No, sir. No, sir. I was okay. able to hear you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I was able to hear you from the beginning, sir. Okay. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank everybody. you, sir. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Uh, one, one.